Hi and good morning to all. Welcome to another lecture series of Point of Care Ultrasound in Emergency. In this lecture, we will be covering on ultrasound guided central venous cannulation. The objectives of this lecture includes understanding the sonoanatomy of central veins and the relevant structures, able to describe the proper equipment preparation and ergonomic positioning, subsequently learning the steps of central vein cannulation guided by ultrasound. In this lecture, we will be covering on the definition of central venous access, advantage of using ultrasound guided technique, sonoanatomy of the central veins, preparation for the procedures and steps of CVC insertion both in plane and out of plane approach and their pitfalls. What is central venous access? The American Society of Anesthesiologists Task Force on Central Venous Access has defined it as placement of a catheter in venous great vessels which are SVC, IVC, brachiocephalic veins, internal jugular veins, subclavian vein, iliac veins, common femoral veins. Excluded are the catheters which terminates in the artery. Why do we use ultrasound? Ultrasound guided technique has become the standard of care as it enhances patient safety by enabling the operator to detect the presence of anatomic variation or venous thrombosis prior to cannulation. It also has reduced complications due to real-time visualization of the structures and has eased the physician to cannulate at times of difficulties such as in obese patients, patients with neck deformity, severe hypovolemia, as well as in ongoing CPR. Ultrasound guided also saves time and cost due to first attempt success. These papers, which was published in year 2011 and 2012 respectively, has provided an evidence-based overview of all topics related to ultrasound guided vascular access, and they proved that ultrasound guided vascular cannulation as the standard practice. In this prospective non-randomized cohort study, it was found that the right IJV was much more bigger in diameter and in most instances was laterally placed to the corresponding carotid artery, making it the preferred site for cannulation. This meta-analysis of 35 studies with 5,108 patients comparing ultrasound guidance with anatomical landmark has shown that lesser bruising and arterial puncture were made when ultrasound was used. Also, higher success rate on first attempt, reduced time taken to perform the procedure and improves quality and safety of the procedure. The advantages were consistent across experienced and inexperienced operators. Coming to sonar anatomy of central veins. The transducer used to visualize vessels is the high frequency transducer and the image obtained on transverse view would be such. The IJV sits lateral to the carotid artery. On longitudinal view, the IJV would remain parallel to the carotid artery. The subclavian vein can be approached either infraclavicular or supraclavicular. In infraclavicular approach, the probe is placed inferior to the clavicle at mid-clavicular region, and this is an image of in infraclavicular transverse view of the subclavian. And this is a longitudinal view of the subclavian. Another approach to subclavian is from the supraclavicular region. The vessel sits just beneath the clavicle and relatively superficial, which is less than 1 cm, making it easier to cannulate. However, due to its close proximity to the pleura and difficulty to compress, it makes this vessel less favorable. This is the visualization of the longitudinal view of the subclavian vein. 
In this approach, needles should only be advanced once all the structures, including the pleura, visualize on a single image. The probe is slight towards the clavicle and an image of the IGV and the subclavian artery is visualized. Subsequently, the probe is tilted to visualize this subclavian vein before cannulation. Coming next to is the common femoral vein. Look for the famous Mickey Mouse sign where you would be able to see the saphenous vein, the common femoral vein and the common femoral artery. How do we do it then? A structured approach has been recommended for ultrasound guided central venous access for clinical practice. For this procedure, a high frequency probe otherwise known as a linear probe is used. The image should be complemented by Doppler function and these images should be recorded and saved for documentation purposes. Prior to the procedure, a lung scan should be done to look for any evidence of pneumothorax. Look for the sliding sign of the pleura. How do we prepare the probe for the procedure? A sterile probe cover as well as gel is used for the procedure. Subsequently, the probe is then secured with a rubber band. And a sterile gel is used on top of the probe cover before it is used for the procedure. The most important factor determining first attempt success is good hand-eye coordination. This procedure is performed by a single operator whereby the ultrasound probe is held by non-dominant hand and the procedure is done using the dominant hand. Hence, the operator position, the insertion side needle and the ultrasound screen should be in a single line. Prior to prepping and dripping, orientate to the vessel both transverse as well as the longitudinal view. This is the longitudinal view of the IJV whereby the vein sits parallel to the artery. While orientating to the vessel, identify the anatomy of the insertion site. Use both short axis as well as long axis. Look for anatomic variation. Determine the vein in relation to the artery. It's a misnomer that blue is a venous flow and red is an arterial flow. But in truth, blue indicates flow away from the probe and red is flow towards the probe. And then, confirm the patency of the vein by applying a gentle pressure on the vein. This excludes venous thrombosis. However, be aware that artery might be compressible if systolic blood pressure is less than 60 millimeters of mercury. Subsequently, cannulate the vein by real-time ultrasound guidance. Either in-plane technique or out-of-plane technique can be used. In in-plane technique, the whole needle can be seen throughout the procedure. In out-of-plane technique, the tip of the needle is seen as a target sign and this target sign is tracked throughout the procedure until it is seen in the center of the vein.
This is an example of how the needle is seen both out of plane as well as in plane technique. In out of plane technique, the needle is seen as a tip in the vessel known as a target sign. In in plane technique, the reverberation artifacts of the needle is seen throughout the procedure entering into the vessel. In out of plane approach, the needle path can be estimated using the Pythogram theorem, whereby the needle is inserted in the 45 degree angle and the path of the needle is approximately 1.4 times as long as the measured depth of the vessel. How about in tight space when there is not much room to maneuver? Tilting of the probe can be done to track the tip of the needle. Vanishing target sign confirms intraluminal needle position. In out of plane approach, the tip of the needle seen as hyperechoic structure should be seen throughout the cannulation process and once it's in the vessel, the vanishing target sign is obtained by fanning the ultrasound distal to the needle. If the needle tip is correctly positioned, the hyperechoic needle tip should appear then disappear exactly in the center of the vessel. Sometimes the needle shaft is misinterpreted as a target sign instead of the needle tip. In order to confirm the tip, ultrasound flame can be fanned distal to the needle and the target sign should disappear and reappear once the ultrasound plane is brought back to its original location. So between out of plane or in plane, which is better? In plane technique enables visualization of the entire needle and its trajectory. Hence, it avoids penetration of the posterior vessel wall. It is generally used by experienced operator. However, the structures lateral to the vein cannot be visualized Hence, it has a higher chance of penetration. Out of plane provides better visualization of vein in relation to artery, and it is easier to learn for physicians without ultrasound skill. It provides a higher first attempt success rate. However, the target sign may not always be the needle tip and causes posterior vessel wall penetration if the needle tip is not seen in con continuity. After anatomical identification of insertion site, confirmation of vein patency, and then cannulation, confirm the needle in the vein. And then confirm the wire in the vein. Confirm the catheter in the vein. This is a summary of the steps. First, Identify the anatomy of insertion site and localization of the vein. And then confirm the patency of the vein. Use real-time ultrasound guidance for puncture of the vein. And then confirm the needle position in the vein. Subsequently, confirm the wire position in the vein and confirm the catheter position in the vein. Agitated saline test is optional. This test can be done to confirm the placement of the catheter. 9 mL of saline is taken in 10 cc syringe and 1 mL of air is taken in another 10 cc syringe. The saline is then agitated to produce micro bubbles before flushing through the central venous catheter. The rapid appearance of prominent turbulence in the right atrium on echo serves as a precise bedside screening test of optimal CVC tip position. Agitated saline test proves to have 100% specificity and positive predictive value. After placement of the central venous catheter, do not forget to scan the lung for any evidence of pneumothorax post insertion. What are the pitfalls of ultrasound guided central venous catheterization? The only pitfall for this procedure using ultrasound is that it gives a false sense of security to inexperienced operator and failed cannulation is deemed to occur if the needle tip is not consistently visualized. 
Do remember that ultrasound guided vascular cannulation is a combination and integration of anatomic landmark knowledge with ultrasound skill and techniques. With that, thank you.